is up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if you guys are new here my name is kyle and i do all things motorcycle related so if that sounds interesting to you make sure to go down hit that subscribe button hit that bell icon so that way you guys get notified when i post new videos like this one so in today's video you might be wondering what this box is here sitting next to me well this is going to be the helmet that I will be using for the 2023 year and beyond. As you guys knew, I was rocking the Rurock Atlas 3.0 for the last year, year and a half, um, two years, whatever it is. Um, that helmet has served me pretty well. There are some cons that I've come up with over the years using that Rurock Atlas 3.0 which I'll talk about here in a little bit. But right now the focus is gonna be on the new helmet. Um, I'm gonna unbox it for you guys. I'm sure you can kind of see the name on the box. So without seeing anything more, why don't you guys go down and write in the comments what model you think this helmet is. Like I'm pretty sure you guys can see the name or the brand. So go ahead down in the comments and leave your prediction on what helmet you think I went with. Um, I was very fortunate. Santa Claus hooked me up with this helmet. Um, so I want to send a shout out to the Santa Claus. If you're watching my video, you know who you are. But uh, nonetheless, let's uh, get this thing unboxed. All right. Don't mind me too much in here. This is my desk. This is where I get work done. It is a little too cold to go film in the garage. But well, as you can see here, it's a Simpson helmet. True American legend, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can go follow them on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Obviously, like I did say, um, a certain Santa Claus hooked me up with uh, this helmet. So this is not a paid video or a sponsored video, nonetheless. So everything that you are seeing in this video is my personal opinion. So I'm pulling the helmet out. What do you guys think it is? Did you leave your comments? So boom, there it is. The Simpson Mod Bandit in flat alloy. I think this thing is a beautiful looking helmet. Um, to me, it kind of, in its own ways, looks a little bit like the Rurok. Um, you got like the futuristic spaceship looking kind of designs with the sweet aerodynamic flow. Um, I've had my eyes on this helmet for quite a long time, probably right around when I was uh, looking at the Rurok. So, one of the reasons why I'm switching from my Rurock 3.0 to the Simpson Mod Bandit is obviously because I want the modular. Obviously I want that function back because as you guys know, I do a lot of trips, I do a lot of riding, and the modular comes in very handy because um, you know we use Santa headsets, but if you're riding with other people that do not have Santa headsets or don't wear helmets in general, it is extremely difficult, as you guys know, if you ride with other people, um, to communicate. So one of the nice pros about a modular helmet is when you are in traffic or you got to yell over to somebody, pop up the front and your whole face is exposed. So therefore, it is pretty simple to communicate. Also, with a modular helmet, you get the function of a... If I can work it right... You get the function of a drop down visor, um, which is very helpful because when you're on long road trips, typically you gotta rock the clear shield. Um, mostly, you know, because of rain, fog, riding at night, riding early mornings, you gotta kinda use your clear shield. So, with that being said, if you're putting eight, nine, ten hours on a bike, you don't want to have to keep swapping out the outer shields. Um, so therefore, if you run into some sun, you can easily just 
drop that down and you are good to go. Rather than trying to slip some sunglasses on after you put your helmet on because I don't know about you guys, but I've done that before in the past. And what seems to happen is my temples here or my ears, they seem to get very sore and they get really tender and it hurts for a couple days. So with a modular helmet like this, with a drop down shield, like I said, is definitely gonna help you 110% combat that fatigue of your ears hurting. So real quick, that is two reasons why I am going with the Simpson Mod Bandit over my Rurock 3.0. Um, just because of functions like that um, for long distance riding, as well as up here, you see you have open and closable vents. If you're familiar with the Rurock, um, I think they might have just changed it for the 4.0 and beyond. I don't know, do not quote me on that. Um, if you're interested, you'd have to do your own research on that. But I believe Rurock finally just added vents that you can open and close on your own. Um, but like for my 3.0, I had to buy separate rubber plugs that you pretty much had to pull the inner liner out of the helmet out and put rubber plugs in your vent holes. So otherwise they would stay open consistently which is fine in the summertime. I mean, that helmet had great airflow. However, if you saw one of my videos when I was reviewing the Rurock, I believe, um, when I did my Tennessee trip a couple of years ago and I was going through the Smoky Mountains um, to do the Tale of the Dragon, we got caught in some heavy, serious rainstorms and with the plugs being open, and that was one of those things, you know, it was kind of forgotten about on my part. I could have done a better job thinking of that scenario, but I did not. And what pretty much happened was because the vents are open with rain, it kind of dribbled in your helmet and you kind of felt rain go down the front of your face and whatnot. So that's a little inconvenient. You kind of want the airflow but if you're on the road and it starts raining, you obviously want the option to close them up or colder weather because that became a little bit of a pain in the butt as well. Um, kind of just having to remove your inner liner a couple times just to change out air vents. So that's why I'm going with the Simpson. Overall, like I said, I like the designs on both helmets, but I kind of wanted a modular just for the travel function. Um, with the option to have a drop down visor. This helmet, like the Rock, are both pin lock ready. So that is an absolute must. If you guys use pin locks, you know that's an absolute game changer, especially for colder riding or riding um, when it's raining out, foggy out, etc., etc., because you do not get fogging on your um, shield which is, like I said, it's an absolute game changer. If your helmet is pin lock ready and you aren't running pin lock, go do yourself a favor, order a pin lock. I believe they're like 40 to 60 bucks, but you gotta get one. Overall, like just real quick comparing this to the Rurock, um, the weight seems pretty much the same. It doesn't feel like it's any heavier than the Rurock was. Obviously, when I add my GoPro and my Senna, the helmet is going to get a little heavier compared to other helmets, but that's just kind of what you got to deal with. You know, you want the added bonuses of a wireless headset. It is DOT and uh, all that certified. Before we went to get this helmet, I went on Simpson's website under their size uh, measuring chart. I had my head measured between what Simpson was recommending and what my head measurements were, that size small would be the best for me. So that's the size we went with. And so far it feels like it fits perfectly. Um, obviously when you get a new helmet, they're gonna be a little tight at first. You don't want them too loose, but you don't want them too tight where you get a headache. Um, a lot of places are pretty cool. If you wear the helmet, as long as you don't take it outside on the road, you wear it around your house for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, what, whatever suits you. If the helmet kind of gives you a headache, a lot of places are pretty cool. You can just get them uh, returned and exchanged. 
kind of no hassle, um, but that's not the case with this helmet. So far, the uh, size measurement, at least in my personal scenario, uh, their size chart was pretty right on the money. Um, like I said, it's tight enough um, where you know it will break in a little bit because obviously the padding is all new and all, all of that. But uh, so far, the, the size has been pretty, pretty rock solid. So I'll just go ahead and throw this on for you guys real quick. And then I'll go over some of the other stuff that I got for this helmet right away. I'll show you that. And then uh, we'll get to pretty much setting this helmet up, getting my Senna installed, getting the pin lock installed. Uh, my, the shield that I'm gonna kind of rock with day to day, get that installed. Oh, one other thing. What was really cool about the Rurock is if you're familiar with the Rurock, you know they have the what they call the fidlock, I believe. Yeah, fidlock. Got the fidlock. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. He got what's called the fidlock, which is pretty neat because it literally just kind of and it's a magnet. It's pretty legit, and you just pull the little red tab. And it just pops right off. That is one thing that I don't care what helmet you get. I'm going to definitely miss from the Rurock. And the Simpson Mod Bandit, like most other helmets, come with the traditional style D-rings. Um, obviously that you have to feed it through, yada, yada, yada. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to change that up here in a second. I usually wear these ride wares. Um, you gotta finagle this a little bit, but it becomes a traditional buckle. So I'll go over that ride wear in a little bit. Um, that way you don't have to always fuss around with your D-rings and it's real simple just to throw the helmet on, buckle it up. All right, as you guys just saw, I got all of my Senna speakers and my microphone and all of that wiring out of my Rurock. Now it's time to just flip this bad boy over and get everything installed in here. And the only thing that you're gonna need to use is I usually try to use like Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape, something of that nature, um, just to kind of keep the wires nice up inside of your padding. As far as how all this stuff, all the padding comes out, you could probably look up YouTube videos on your specific helmet. Um, I'm never really sure. I just kind of go slow and try to take it out, taking my time just so I don't break anything or rip anything. But you're going to have to kind of take all that out and kind of get everything ran to how you think you might want it and kind of just go from there. But uh, yeah. Let's get to it. So what up guys? It is a day or two later from where I last left off, where I started pulling the uh, Senna and my microphone off my Rurock, mostly because it is a very tedious process and I wasn't really feeling too hot. Kind of had to set everything up and then I had to kind of redo my work once or twice because kind of like the Senna on the side like was rubbing on the helmet. So I had to add some spacers into the uh, pinch clamp for the Senna. So nonetheless, I didn't really record that too much because it's a lot of kind of trial by error, uh, kind of get stuff on, wear the helmet, make sure the microphones are kind of where you want them and uh, so on and so forth. And then I had to take the GoPro off so I could get the GoPro all mounted up. As you can see, this is the finished product. 
Got my Senna on the side, got my mirrored shield on with my GoPro mounted. So that is the finished product. Let me go throw it on real quick for you guys. Oh, and can't forget, got my buckle installed. So that way it's very simple to put on and off. So what do you guys think? How do you like this helmet? Comment down below. How do you think it looks? I think it looks pretty badass. Honestly, I kind of already like the uh, the look and just the colors and stuff so much better than my Rurok. But uh, leave a comment down below. But there she is. There's my Simpson Mod Bandit and the uh, Flat Alloy, I believe it is called. Um, so that's the helmet that I'm going to be rocking for 2023 and beyond. Um, so far, just kind of wearing this helmet while I'm test fitting everything. I absolutely love the way it fits. Like I said earlier, um, according to their website, uh, the size measurement chart that I went off seems pretty true to the size because um, I don't have any complaints on the way this helmet fits. But I'm looking forward to this riding season, wearing this new helmet to where I can lay down some serious miles and have the added benefits of the, you know, the vents that open and close and the just the modular helmet in general. But uh, I'll show you guys a little close up here. Got my GoPro on that chin mount, like I said. Got the Senna on the side. That mirrored finish is pretty badass in my opinion. Like I said, it is, it is a badass helmet. And then, like I said earlier, I got my ride wear, which is just absolutely super convenient. If I can try to do this with one hand, just see it just buckles right in. Super convenient. Like I said earlier, I'll have all the links to this stuff that I used down below in the video description. Like I said before, I'll have all the links to everything that I use from the chin mount to the ride wear buckle, um, the actual helmet and the chrome or mirrored finished shield. I'll have all the links to everything down below in the video description. But hopefully you guys like my helmet. Make sure to comment if you like the helmet or if you rock the Mod Bandit or Ghost Bandit from Simpson currently. I'm curious to see your feedback and hear from you guys. Um, how long have you had the helmet? If you guys had any issue with the helmet, let me know down below in the comments, please. I greatly appreciate it. But if you guys made it this far in the video, make sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, hit that little bell icon, so that way you guys get notified when I post new videos like this one. And make sure to ride safe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.